Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today's medical tutorial is on the Whipple Procedure, Hepatic Arterial Anatomy, Considerations, and Pitfalls. Just for a quick review, type 1 hepatic arterial anatomy. The um, celiac artery gives off the left gastric splenic artery. Common hepatic, proper hepatic with the gastroduodenal at the gastroduodenal artery takeoff, uh, right and left hepatic artery. Uh, this is present uh, in somewhere in the 55 uh, to 70 percent range, depending on um, uh, which study and autopsy study you you read. There's some. There was an excellent uh, study on uh, using. Uh, a thousand cadaveric donors for liver transplantation by Dr. Hyatt and uh, Dr. Busatil out of UCLA, um, uh, where they looked at the donor arterial anatomy in, in um, a thousand transplants. So, some of this data is from autopsy studies and some from uh, transplant uh, donor data. Uh, nonetheless, uh, as as you have learned uh, during the Whipple procedure, the gastroduodenal artery needs to be uh, ligated. Um, one of the pitfalls that can happen, regardless of the uh, type of anatomy, is if there is a, uh, this is the celiac artery right here, by the way. Uh, if there is a high-grade high uh, stenosis of the celiac artery uh, and hepatic artery flow is in this direction, ligation of the gastroduodenal artery, which is required during the Whipple surgery, can cause uh, a decrease in flow in the proper hepatic artery or even thrombosis uh, leading to hepatic necrosis. So um, it's routine to perform a quick test clamp either with a vessel loop or just uh, with a uh, bulldog clamp uh, and to check the pulsation. Celiac artery stenosis um, is more frequently identified on preoperative uh, imaging because um, CT scans with uh, the arterial phase contrast more frequently will pick uh, this uh, up. Uh, there are cases where this, where this uh, high-grade stenosis can be stented preoperatively um, if it is identified preoperatively. Uh, if it is unrecognized and uh, there is lack of flow in the hepatic artery, then hepatic artery reconstruction uh, would need to be performed at the time of Whipple surgery. This is pretty unusual, um, but all it takes is one case where there is hepatic artery necrosis um, um, for which there's no reason to uh, to miss that. Uh, this is a situation of with uh, actually type three hepatic arterial anatomy, and um, we uh, we like to actually document that the in the operative note the type of hepatic arterial anatomy that's present. Um, I think that's important for the surgeon to actually recognize if there's type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 2 is, uh, we're not going to talk about, that's when there's a replaced left hepatic artery off of the left gastric. Um, there aren't truly any Whipple, Whipple procedure considerations with type 2. Type 3 hepatic uh, anatomy is when the right hepatic artery comes off of, uh, off of the superior mesenteric artery. It travels under the common bile duct, um, and what the best way to determine whether there is type 3 hepatic arterial anatomy is truly just to put your finger under the common bile duct and feel for pulsation. There should not be um, consistent pulsation under the common bile duct along its entire length. Sometimes you'll feel pulsation if a normal right hepatic artery goes under the under the common bile duct, which it does in 60% of cases. So, uh, careful palpation along the length of the common bile duct and common hepatic duct will help you uh, to determine whether there is a replaced uh, right hepatic artery. Now, a true replaced is present in about 10%. And an accessory right hepatic is present in about 7%, so the total ends up being about 17% of patients will have uh, some type of either replaced or accessory hepatic artery. If uh, it's an accessory artery, clearly it can be ligated, uh, but if it's a, and it, the best way to tell is just by the size in comparison to the other vessels uh, or by further dissection. 
Uh, if this is a true large uh, vessel, uh, and it has to be sacrificed because of cancer, um, then reconstruction may or may not be necessary depending on the size of the left hepatic artery. Sometimes I'll just check the back bleeding. Uh, if there's uh, arterial pulsatile back bleeding, I won't reconstruct it. If, if there isn't, um, it may need to be reconstructed. The best thing to do is to try to preserve it, however. Um, and that means careful dissection of the replaced right hepatic artery all the way to the SMA. Um, and this can be done in both directions. Uh, during the SMA dissection, when, when we look for the pancreatic duodenal vessels, uh, you just keep following north. We like to do the, the SMA artery first approach in the, in the majority of our cases recently, and that allows us to actually identify the origin of the replaced right hepatic artery. Uh, type 4 hepatic arterial anatomy is a replaced left and a replaced right, uh, so the replaced right is the main consideration. Um, the complete common hepatic artery off of the SMA is seen in about 2.5%, uh, and that's type uh, 5 hepatic arterial anatomy. Um, if you do high volume Whipple surgery as we do at St. Joseph Medical Center, you will encounter this a few times a year. Um, so, uh, you know, we, th we're, this is consistent, and we find this, this number to be consistent with, um, you know, with our, um, th this number is consistent with our volume uh, to, to see this a few times a year. Uh, it's very easy to spot initially because the, the portal vein is completely anterior when you're doing the portal dissection. So anterior portal vein. Um, is, is seen and, and, almost, and almost immediately identified. Um, and then when you look at the celiac uh, artery and the splenic artery, there's just nothing else uh, behind it. The, there is a large pulsation behind the common duct. So if this is the SMA, the whole celiac will come off the first portion of the SMA, travel under the common bile duct, and then supply the right and left hepatic artery. Clearly, uh, this is a situation um, where uh, it could be quite devastating uh, to injure this vessel. Um, if it has to be sacrificed because of cancer considerations, then this is a situation where a saphenous vein bypass is clearly um, uh, necessary. Uh, we tend to like to perform the bypass off the supraceliac aorta. Uh, occasionally, however, though, I have actually reconstructed with the saphenous vein off of the SMA uh, itself. Uh, if the SMA is of good quality, uh, it, it serves as a nice inflow vessel. Um, these, hepatic, these hepatic arterial anatomy uh, considerations are uh, extremely uh, important to avoid um, complications of uh, hepatic infarction. Um, uh, I thank you uh, for listening. Stay tuned for more medical tutorials on the Whipple procedure.